Hi, my name is Gary Davis, publisher of Native Business Magazine, and you're watching Native Business TV. We are here with the Mandan Hadatsa and Arikara Nation on a fact-finding journey to find out all there is to know about greenhouses, horticulture, agriculture in general, from the country that does it the best, the Netherlands. Mr. Chairman, what began the Mandan Hadatsa Arikara journey from the United States, from the Fort Berthold Reservation, here to the amazing country of the Netherlands, uh, to look for answers to agricultural questions? What began that journey? Well, uh, it, it actually happened with a lot of luck. Uh, come across, uh, uh, primarily came across a an article on the National Geographic in September of 2017 in which they were the featured story about a tiny country feeding the world and having read that article uh, it, it really opened up a lot of doors for possibilities in reestablishing uh, our economy. The, the, the situation with us is that uh, we've always been a, a nation uh, of, of agricultural development for thousands of years that went dormant because of failed U.S. policy and our circumstances but when I read that article it was just like putting a puzzle together here's somebody that's doing something that's in line with our history in line with what we've done before and with our opportunities now at home uh, going from what we had in the past to the uh, energy development that's occurring today uh, it made a lot of sense to go over and see what they're doing over here and, uh, and learn and uh, get an opportunity to reestablish what we once had. So given that, what have you learned in the past couple of days from the Dutch people about greenhouses, agriculture, horticulture, and, and what seems to be maybe the greatest repository of knowledge in that space, in those spaces, maybe in the world? As a group together, you know, what we've learned from them is uh, about the, the importance of technology, advancements in utilizing technology to enhance what they've already been doing. And they've become so successful that uh, they're able to grow more and grow better quality products in a smaller amount of space, it seems. And uh, that really is uh, enlightening for us. What I really like about what they've shown us is, is similar to Native American philosophies of the past, that you have to work in balance with your environments. You can't simply think you're going to dominate and control it all the time. What, what they've shown us here in the Netherlands is that they're gonna increase their capacities, use science and technology, but work within the environment that's given to them and maximize it. And that's really, really exciting. Yesterday, you had the opportunity to meet with the Ministry of Food, Nature, and Agriculture. What are some of the things that you took away from the meeting yesterday with the Ministry? Well, first of all, you know, the government responsibility, uh, similar to my position, what is the responsibility in the government? It, it can't be total control. It can't be government doing 100% of what needs to be done. You hear them repeat over and over that there's almost like a, uh, a, a tripart uh, association, tripart partnership. And that tripart is education, uh, educational uh, entities and institutions, uh, the producers, those that are, are making money that are in the, in the field, so to speak, in the business, and then the government. So they're all coordinating together, not just the government saying, this is what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna do it. They're relying upon each other to make decisions of how to go about it and uh, at different perspectives, but at the same time, unity. Uh, we're not gonna try to reinvent, reinvent the wheel. We need to do something similar back at home. Uh, bring together education, bring together the, the producers in the field, uh, the businesses. We're going to share 
what we have here with others in the world and the focus is, is going to be long term by working together and by sharing that with as many people as we can. And you don't find that everywhere in the world. Most people are, are very guarded, uh, very protective about what they have economically and they're not willing to share. And we see a difference here and, and that's why we came this way. I've been greatly impressed by what's here. I knew we couldn't just visit over a phone. I knew we couldn't send emails or, or visit on internet. Uh, I knew that we had to physically come here and experience it to see if it was a reality, and it is. And now, now the goal, now the objective is to envision that back at home and saying, how can we make that happen there? And, and I know it's going to happen. Uh, I, I don't think we have any choice but to make it happen. And yeah, there is a bit of an irony if you do go back at history, right? Hudson Bay and everything else. There is some irony to all this, all right? European group of people very quite early in Dutch exploration and coming into northern Canada, east coast, coming as far into where we live as well. Coming that far and trading and, and all that happened there and then uh, the radical changes that occur, then all of a sudden, now it's uh, 2019, we're, we're talking uh, 150 to 200 years later and, and all of a sudden the same group of people that were in, uh, impacted, indigenous people, are going over to Europe, <laughs> looking at what they now have, and say, that's similar to what we used to have, and now we're gonna take that back to where we're from, right? right. And it's pretty darn amazing. haven't been able to find anything that uh, speaks to any other delegation coming and sitting down uh, you know, with the ministry uh, from Indian country. Mm -hmm. um, we went to the World Horticultural Center. Mm -hmm. The Mandan Hadatsa logo is yeah. up on, on the marquee. What does this mean for native business? What is the message to Indian country overall in economic development? It's going to open the doors. It's going to send out a real strong message that's not going to be ignored. I think the, uh, the, uh, the focus and the attention, uh, what has been going on here, what we're going to bring back to Indian country from this experience is going to do three things. It's going to first of all tell Indian country as they observe and look at it, this is something you can do. Then the next feeling that they're going to get after they realize it's something they can do, they're going to decide that this is something they want to do. And then after they, they get ready to move forward with resources and, and, and ramping up everything necessary to make this happen at home, they're gonna realize this is absolutely something we must do. I don't think it can be ignored. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we can, uh, uh, that Indian country at this point in time in our history can afford to ignore it anymore for what's going on in the world. You're going to want to do this, you, you can do this, and then you're going to realize, you know what, we really don't have a choice. We must do what we're doing here. You know, to be, to be sovereign, uh, you can't be a true sovereign if you're dependent on everybody else for your well-being, for your, your livelihood, for your existence. You start growing your own crops, you start feeding yourself, you start generating your own power, you start doing these things on your own, the next thing you know, you become a true sovereign. And you're not at the discretion of somebody else. You depend on your own self, not on somebody else. And then all of a sudden, more doors open up, more opportunities open up. And, and when, when other tribes begin to experience this, it's just going to spread like fire, I believe, <laughs> I truly believe.